Dear Rescue 911, I'm a single parent with a two and a half year old daughter, Allison, who is my life. One of the episodes dealt with an electrical cord from a light in the child's room catching fire. During the program, one of the firefighters explained how everyone should check their wiring periodically. I immediately went into her room and checked the heater wire. When I moved the dresser, I found where the wire had burned through, charred the back of the dresser, as well as the wall, and the plug into the receptacle was partially melted. I can't tell you how I felt when I discovered this and what could have happened had I not been watching the program that night. I honestly sat down in the middle of the floor with her in my arms and cried. There aren't words enough to express my gratitude. Thanks again. Sincerely yours, Melissa Lindsay. For most of us, our homes seem so safe, we could never imagine them posing a serious threat to our lives. But on December 19th, 1989, while moving into a new house in St. Louis, Missouri, Glenn and Annie Murphy discovered that what appears safe can be deceiving. We were in and out moving boxes. My wife, my baby daughter, and myself. Well, aren't you happy we're here in your new house? My other kids were at school. While we were moving, my wife had gotten chilly in the house and asked me what I like the furnace. The rest of the day, I was in and out, in and out. My wife and my baby daughter were staying, straightening out stuff as I brought it in. Around four, Glenn returned to the new house after picking up their other children from school. And I blowed the horn for my wife to open the door. And it took her so long to answer the door that uh, I thought maybe she was asleep. She was saying her eyes and nose was burning. She complained of a headache. She was weak and nauseated. It didn't register to me because she was healthy all during the day. I just thought maybe she was tired. By 6.30 that evening, Annie had taken a turn for the worse. She called me and told me I better take her to the hospital because she thinks she's dying. Glenn left his 14-year-old son, Dominic, at home in charge of the three younger kids. On the route to the hospital, she said, I feel better already. When Annie checked into the emergency room, she was told she would have to wait her turn to see a doctor. While we were sitting there, Rescue 911 came on. coming on. You want me to turn you around so you can see it? Being that was my favorite program, my husband wheeled me around in the wheelchair to watch it. That Sunday morning was cold and wet. Bob and Magda Brown were at home, catching up on household chores. I say, hey, something is wrong. It's cold here. So right away, I know that the furnace is not working. We find the pilot light is off, and then Magda has to start lighting it. The people that were on the program was going through the same procedures we had went through to light the furnace. All of a sudden, she says, oh my God, I don't feel well. Something's wrong. She was tired, and she complained that her stomach hurt. And I started checking it. Magda says there's gas, and I call up the gas company. I said, my wife is violently sick. She's got a headache. She's thrown up. She smells gas. Therefore, I'd appreciate somebody coming out. When I heard that lady on TV explain the symptoms she had with the pounding in her head, I turned to my husband. I said, do you think that's what happened to me? You know, probably so. They had a problem with carbon dioxide poisoning. That scared me. The kids were in the house long enough to get as much carbon monoxide or more as my wife did. I was speeding, 
I was praying, Lord, please let him be alive. I knew myself that my kids was dead. Dominic! Dominic was half on his knees. He started crying, just laying there. He didn't know what was happening to him. Marquita, come on. Come on, stand up for that. And they were like semi-conscious, intoxicated with their carbon monoxide. Come on, baby. Quit. Within minutes of a neighbor's call for help, units from the Moline Fire Department arrived, led by Fire Captain Dave Jetton. We were approached by the father of the children. He informed us that he had the children out. I sent two firefighters over to check on the kids. Carbon monoxide poison is very dangerous. You're never aware that it's actually taking place. It's odorless, it's tasteless. You just don't know when it's there. All four children were taken to St. Louis Children's Hospital and put under the care of emergency physician Douglas Carlson. These children had very high levels of carbon monoxide when they were taken from the house. The delay of even a half an hour in the father getting home could in fact have led to the death of one or more of the children. Two and a half years later, the Murphy family shows no ill effects from the incident. Every year, thousands of people suffer carbon monoxide poisoning. I would advise anyone that's moving in a new house to have whatever type of heating system to have it checked by a professional. I wanted to thank the lady on TV. She explained how she felt so good, you know, and it clicked so well with me. If we had not watched Rescue 911, we would have died. Each time you see that program, that that memory comes up. I love my wife and kids, and I thank the Lord. He answered prayers.